Hello, today I would like to talk about the exponential distribution. The exponential distribution is a continuous distribution and it is used in many different applications. Uh, for example, it is often used to model the time between events uh, and because of that it is related to the Poisson distribution. Remember that when we are talking about the Poisson distribution, we said that we have a situation that we are counting something. For example, we are counting the arrival of customers so for example this is the first arrival the time of the first arrival this is the second arrival the third arrival and so on or you know we are counting the number of packets arriving at a node in a network or you know we are, we are counting the number of phone calls and so on so and we said that if you look at an interval then the number of events or the number of arrivals in that interval you know we can model it by a Poisson random variable now, if you have a situation like that, then the time between arrivals, right? For example, the time from the first until the second arrival, or from the second arrival until the third arrival, and so on, these times are going to be exponentially distributed. So, if this is my random variable x, this x is going to have an exponential distribution. And we will talk about this in much more detail when we talk about Poisson processes. Today I just want to introduce the exponential distribution and talk a little bit about its uh, properties. Okay, so let's start by writing the probability density function of the exponential random variable. So when x is exponential, we write it like this. x is uh, distributed exponentially, so x is exponential, and it has a parameter lambda. So if x is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda, then its probability density function is given by lambda e to the minus lambda x for positive values of x and is zero otherwise so it's a positive uh, random variable and as you see the PDF has an exponential uh, form here and that's why it is called the exponential distribution and we sometimes write the PDF as lambda e to the minus lambda x u of x where u is the unit step function just for simplicity so u of x is 1 for positive values of x and 0 otherwise so it's just a simple notation okay so this is the definition of the exponential random variable this is the PDF uh, of the exponential random variable and this graph shows uh, the PDF for some different values of lambda so this is lambda equals 2 this is lambda equals 1 and this is lambda equals 1 half and as you see the function decays exponentially as x becomes larger okay so we have the PDF how about the CDF well the CDF is you know we can obtain it by integrating the PDF obviously the CDF is gonna be 0 for negative values but for positive values, it's just going to be the integral from 0 to x, lambda e to the minus lambda x, uh, u du. And if you do this, this becomes the minus e to the minus lambda u from 0 to x. And it becomes 1 minus e to the minus lambda x. So we can write the CDF of the exponential random variable as 1 minus e to the minus lambda x u of x so that's the cdf of x if, if x is exponentially distributed with parameter lambda okay so let's find it, its uh, expected value and variance well again we assume that x is exponential with parameter lambda so its expected value is integral from 0 to infinity x f x of x which is lambda e to the minus lambda x dx so this is an integral we can do it by integration by part or you can just look at a table of integrals and you will find out that this integral becomes 1 over lambda so the expected value of x is just 1 over lambda where lambda is the parameter how about the variance well to find the variance we need to first find the expected value of x squared Similarly, you can find the expected value of x squared is x squared lambda e to the minus lambda x dx. And again, using integration by part, 
or you know this is a probably you can find it in uh, any table of integrals you will find out that this uh, integral becomes 2 over lambda squared so uh, the variance of x is equal to expected value of x squared minus e of x squared 2 over lambda squared minus 1 over lambda squared becomes 1 over lambda squared so to summarize expected value of x is 1 over lambda and variance of x is 1 over lambda squared okay now that we know the pdf the cdf the expected value and the variance let's talk a little bit about the properties of the exponential random variable so the first property is that the exponential random variable can be viewed as a continuous analog of the geometric distribution so remember what was the def definition or what was the uh, random experiment behind the geometric distribution well you toss a coin until you observe the first heads right so I have a coin and I assume that probability of heads is equal to P I toss it until I observe the first heads and we discussed this uh, geometric distribution previously so if X is geometric this is a discrete uh, random variable with parameter p uh, then the range of x is basically 1 2 3 so x is either 1 2 or 3 and so on and we discussed previously that probability that x is equal to k is 1 minus p to the k minus 1 times p in other words if you interpret heads as a success you know you're repeating an experiment until the first success you the probability that x equals k is the probability that you have k minus 1 failures until you observe your first success or your first heads now how is this related to the exponential distribution well remember that we said that this exponential distribution is used to model the time between the arrival of you know customers or the events that happen so this is the first arrival this is the second arrival and so on so if you look at here I am sitting here and let's say I'm counting the number of customers uh, so I'm waiting until the first customer arrives right so let's say this is time equals zero and I'm waiting until the first customer arrives at this time so I can model this process in the following way I can divide the time to very short intervals you know so let's say this is Delta this is Delta this is Delta this is delta and so on okay so let's say delta is maybe one second or my one millisecond or something like that now in each interval small interval here the prob probability that I have a customer uh, or have an arrival is very small so it looks like I'm tossing a coin where for that coin probability of head is very small and if I observe a heads I say I will have a customer and if it tails uh, there is no customer so I am modeling the process like this so the first time that I observe a heads I say I have a customer so here for example I toss the coin tails 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 until at this time I observe heads and that's the arrival of the first customer so you can show that if Delta goes to zero becomes very small under these assumptions this time in the limit approaches the exponential distribution so this has been done in the book uh, in our online textbook if you're interested into looking at that but this interpretation of the exponential distribution is very useful in understanding uh, properties of the exponential distribution so for example uh, one property that I would like to talk about is that the exponential distribution is a memoryless distribution so the exponential random variable is memoryless now what it means is that let's say I'm counting the number of customers right here times equals zero and I know the time uh, until the first customer arrives is exponentially distributed right so let's say this called is t1 the arrival of the first customer and this time x has is exponential 
with some parameter lambda. Now suppose that you are sitting and waiting for the first customer and then maybe some time passes, right? And no customer arrives. Then from now on, you want to look at uh, the arrival of the first customer, right? Now, if you look at the time from now, the arrival of the customer, the first customer from this time is also exponential distributed. It, in, in other words, it doesn't matter if you waited five minutes or one hour and no, no customer arrived. Still, the time from now until the arrival of the next customer is exponentially distributed. Now, why is this true? This can be explained from our discussion before on the geometric distribution. So we can model it like this. So I am so I'm sitting, I am tossing a coin, and these are very small time intervals. So I toss a coin, and if it, if it heads, uh, I have a customer, the a customer arrives. If it tails, no customer arrives. So we are modeling the process like that. So let's say I uh, toss a coin a few times, and all of them is tails. Now I am sitting here. Now from now on, what do I see? Well, it's, it's still the same thing. I have the same coin. And because the coin tosses are independent, I am tossing a coin until I observe the first heads. So it doesn't matter how many tails you know I had before, you know, it's the process is memoryless. So that's why the exponential random variable is also memoryless. Now let's be more accurate. Let's write it as in a mathematical format. When we say it's memoryless, what do we mean? We this is exactly what we mean. That if x is exponential with parameter lambda, then the probability that x is larger than some x plus a, given that x is larger than a, is the same as probability that x is larger than x. So again, if you interpret uh, x as the time that you wait until the first customer arrives, and let's say t equals 0 here, you wait, and then here we are at time a, right? No customer has arrived so far. So what we know is that x is larger than a. Now from now on, I want to look at the arrival of the first customer right this is a now if this first the arrival of the first customer is here then I am saying that this X is again exponentially distributed with the same parameter lambda so it doesn't matter how long I waited how large this a is basically this time is lost okay so how do we prove this well we can prove it using the CDF of the exponential distribution so remember that the CDF of the exponential distribution was e1 minus e to the minus lambda x for positive values of x so probability that x is larger than t is e to the minus lambda t okay so probability that x is larger than x plus a given that x is larger than a is the same as probability that x is larger than x plus a and x is larger than a divided by probability that x is larger than a so this is a definition of conditional probability this is equal to probability that x is larger than x plus a divided by probability that x is larger than a and this is because you know if x is larger than a x plus a is also it's also larger than uh, a so we just can remove this one so using this here, e, this is e to the minus lambda x plus a divided by e to the minus lambda a, which is e to the minus lambda x. Well, that's exactly what we want to show. This is probability of x larger than x. So we prove that probability that x is larger than x plus a, given that x uh, is larger than a, is the probability that x larger than x. So if I tell you, you know, I will... I wait for one hour no customer arrives so we know that the arrival of the first customer is larger than one hour after one hour then the probability that x is larger than x plus one is the same as from the beginning if when we started uh, probability of x larger than x so the time from now until the arrival of the first customer is still going to be exponentially distributed because of this we call that we say that the uh, exponential random variable is memoryless and that is a very important property in particular 
it makes the analysis much easier. So if I have a system and I can model the arrival of events or uh, arrival of customers or whatever uh, using these processes, then the analysis becomes much easier because the process is memoryless. And we will talk about uh, all of these much more in detail when, uh, later on when we talk about uh, the Poisson processes. Okay, thank you.